Across different cultures, there are differences in eye contact. One of the most powerful rules in Caucasian culture is that you look at someone while they're talking to communicate respect and to communicate that you're listening. This rule isn't necessarily as strong in other cultures though. It's not necessarily the same for Africans, most African Americans or Indigenous Australians. Aboriginal Australian kids might be taught the opposite rule, that to communicate respect to a more senior person, you actually look away. You don't look at them in the eye when they're talking. I'm sure you can imagine how this could cause friction for people from different cultures when they're trying to interact with each other. Imagine an Anglo-Australian teacher teaching an Indigenous Australian child. The teacher may not get eye contact from the student while the teacher is talking, and the teacher might interpret this as disrespect, as though the child's not paying attention. But actually, the child's showing a lot of respect to the teacher. You can imagine how confusing it would be for the child then to get in trouble when they're actually trying to do the right thing. Erickson and Schultz found something like this in the context of counselling interviews. White people would maintain eye contact while listening, but broke their gaze while speaking. The black participants in that study would do the opposite. Lots of eye contact while speaking, but not so much while listening. This meant that when there was a white speaker and a black listener, the speaker often thought that the listener wasn't actually paying attention because they weren't being looked at with a steady gaze. It got worse. When the white speaker tried to send a non-verbal signal to check that the listener was listening, it was often missed because the black listener was looking away. So the white speaker would do it again or repeat themselves, which can be quite insulting for a listener. When the speaker was black and the listener was white though, the steady eye contact of the speaker was sometimes too much for the listener. In many white cultures, you maintain eye contact about two thirds of the time while the speaker's talking. You look at them, but you don't look at them 100% of the time. I don't know if you've had that experience when someone's giving you 100% eye contact and you can't gather your thoughts anymore because you get drawn into this vortex of their eyeballs. You might register this, but not in a conscious way. You might not be going, wow, I'm really used to 65% eye contact. This guy's really cranking it up to 85%. You're not walking around like that. What you might walk away thinking is, oh, that guy seemed a bit full on, or that guy seemed intense. Just as there are differences in eye contact, there are also cultural differences in body orientation. Body orientation refers to how we position or posture our body in relation to other people. Direct body orientation refers to when two people face each other squarely. Indirect body orientation refers to when two people position their bodies at an angle to one another. As an example, in Indonesia, they've got fairly indirect body orientation, whereas Australians tend to have more direct body orientation. This is even though the preferred interpersonal distance is closer in Indonesia than Australia. This is similar, although not quite the same, as a difference in preferred orientation for Arab people and Americans. Arabs who are talking to each other prefer to be closer and oriented more directly than Americans. Remlin's research with European cultures showed that Dutch and Scottish people who were interacting with each other had more indirect body orientations than English, Greek and Italian people talking to each other. You often don't face somebody directly in any culture really, if you're just chatting. Often you angle your body away somewhat from the other person, but there's always variations as to how much. Those from cultures with more direct body orientation can come across to those with more indirect body orientation as, wow, that person's intense. Then there's differences in how loudly you speak. America has a reputation of a loud talking culture. The evidence suggests that it largely is, although there's huge differences within the country. So what about other vocal features? Generally, we expect people to be looking at us when we're talking. We also want people to show that they're listening with head nods and little vocal encouragements. For example, yes, or wow, or mm-hmm, or my goodness. They're called minimal encouragers. They're designed to communicate that you're listening and encourage people to keep talking. Not everyone does this. It can create miscommunication. Tannen found that people from New York would enthusiastically show that they were listening by saying very loudly, wow, or no kidding. But for other New Yorkers, this just meant that you were paying attention and was a sign of encouragement. People from California though, found the loud responses frightening and confusing and sometimes even stopped in the middle of their sentence. So you can see the potential for miscommunication here too.